Occupational hygiene is defined as the art and discipline of anticipating, recognizing, evaluating, and controlling health hazards in the working environment with the objective of protecting the worker health and well-being and safeguarding the community at large. Because we must remember what you are exposed to at work will also have the potential to carry it home. So in terms of occupational hygiene, these principles include the community, the protection of the community. Also, this definition resonates very well with the purpose of the Occupational Safety Act 85 of 1993 as amended, which is administered by the Department of Employment and Labor. The principle of occupational hygiene is to identify hazardous agents or conditions in the workplace that could cause disease, injury, or discomfort, evaluate the extent of the risk due to exposure to these other agents or conditions and thus control them to prevent ill health in the long or short term. As we are now in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, the importance of occupational hygiene has been brought to the forefront. Previously, most focus was on safety issues as when you get injured, you can see the blood at that moment, you can see a head getting cut off. But when it comes to ill health, these issues tend to take time to manifest depending on the condition of that particular person exposed. This coronavirus is a biological agent and thus requires control measures to be put in place to prevent ill health. Other health hazards that are frequently encountered in the workplace include, but are not limited to noise and hand arm vibration from tools and mobile equipment, which can also cause whole body vibration, chemicals from processing and maintenance activities that occur in the workplace, and such chemicals can include uh, dust such as asbestos, respirable crystalline silica, coal dust, diesel exhaust particulates as well as cotton dust. So you can see there are many aspects in terms of exposures that are addressed in occupational hygiene. Also now in this era of climate change, we are faced with elevated ambient temperatures and this causes heat stress. There are fire fires that occur because we must remember a workplace environment is not only enclosed, we've got people that work in the outside environment. We've got floods and this poses a risk because there can be mold whereby employees will be exposed to such molds as a result of floods. All these issues, they require assessment and management of these hazards to ensure continued health of employees. In addressing these issues that have already mentioned, measurement of exposure and assessment of risk is done and control measures developed to improve that workplace environment. Based on this, advice is provided on control strategies that need to be implemented to prevent or reduce the exposure. These they also follow what we call the hierarchy of control, whereby we first have to look at eliminating that hazard. If it is not possible to eliminate the hazard at all, because if you make an example of ambient temperatures, how do you eliminate that particular hazard? Then we have to look now what we call engineering control measures or modify that workplace environment. Or we look at administrative control measures whereby we will rotate people or you look at personal protective equipment, which you always prefer to be the last resort because that requires a lot of interaction with the worker in the workplace because they have to be supervised that they are using it correctly. So when it comes to occupational hygiene, there are many issues that we have to consider when we talk to a workplace environment. If we look at the regulatory framework, We've got different regulations that address occupational hygiene aspects whereby the employer has to follow what is said in the regulation. We've got the noise induced hearing loss regulations which uh, addresses issues of exposure to noise whereby if people are exposed to 85 or above 85 decibels there must be management of such exposures. 
but these concepts are pack unpacked further in the regulations. We've got the environmental regulations for workplaces, which will talk now to issues of heat stress, as I've made an example of ambient temperatures, to also talk to cold stress, because we've got people that are working in cold environments. Also, these people need to be protected. Also, the environmental regulations will talk to issues of illumination. In the olden days, when these regulations were written, we were not in this highly technological environment whereby we've moved to different types of illumination requirements. However, these regulations still address those aspects but are under review at the moment. We also have the economics regulations which specify what the employer needs to do in terms of economics requirements when such risks are identified. An example of such has been brought to the forefront due to the exposure to the coronavirus, whereby workplaces had to be re-engineered and some people had to work from home. That is also an economics aspect because now we have changed the way people are working and now we have to consider now how is it going to affect productivity and how does it affect their well-being. We have, when it comes to management of chemicals, the regulations for us as chemical substances, which is also under review. We also have the lead regulations. Both of these, they look into management of chemicals in the workplace. Soon we'll be promulgating the asbestos abatement regulations. We are waiting for the minister to sign off the submission. Then the Gazette will come out before the end of 2020. Because in South Africa, we are no longer manufacturing asbestos, we have to manage what is there. So these regulations will be addressing such issues. So when it comes to the example of coronavirus that we made and the modes that we made, we've got the hazardous biological agents that address these issues because all of these regulations ensure that worker health and employee well-being is ensured in the workplace. Also, they do not care over these issues to the community. Thank you for listening. As previously mentioned, we will continue to record the videos and share with you.